Hey, this is Milan Milan. So we're here for today's daily read, November the 12th, 2023. We got about eight different sections. Okay. Okay. So here we go. The first one is Peter's Miraculous Escape from Prison. You'll find this in Acts 12, verses 6 through 19. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door <clears throat> were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and the light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, and he did not know what was done by the angel was real but thought that he was seeing a vision. So when they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and they went down the street and immediately the angel departed from them. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, he knew for certain that the Lord had sent his angel and has delivered me from the hands of Herod and all of the expectation of the Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where they were many gathered together and they were praying. And as Peter knocked on the door of the gate, the girl named Rhonda came to answer the door. When he she recognized Peter's voice. Because of her gladness, she did not open the gate. She ran in and immediately announced that Peter had stood at the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that this was so. And so they said, it is his angel. But Peter <laughs> continued to knock. And when they opened the door, they saw him and they were astonished. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go, tell the things to James and to the brethren. And they departed and went into another place. I'm sorry, he departed and went into another place. Then as soon as it was day, there was so small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. But when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. And when he went down to Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Now this is the death of Herod of Rigba. You'll find this in Acts 12 verses 20 through 25. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they had come to him with one accord and having been made blast as the king personal aid, their friend, they asked for peace because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on the day set, Herod arrayed in royal apparel sat on the throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God, not a man. Then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God. And he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And they took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Barnabas and Saul are sent out. 
You'll find this in Acts 13, verses 1 through 3. Now in the church there was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius, and Serene, Manon, who had been brought up with Herod, the Terrot and Saul, as they as minister in the, to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Paul's first missionary journey. Acts 13 verses 4 through 12. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. Now when they had come and gone down through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, who was with the pro prosonum, Sergius Faphis, an intelligent man. This man, for Barnabas and Saul, had sought out to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, so for his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the prosonum away from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O fool of all deceit, all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, you will not cease perverting the straight way of the Lord. And now indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him. And he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the personal believed when he saw that what he had done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Paul preaches in Antioch and Pisidia. This is in Acts 13, verses 13 through 43. Now, when Paul and his party sent sail to Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John departed from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they, became, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after reading on the law and the prophets, the ruler of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up, motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, with an uplifted arm, he brought them out of it. Now for a time, for about 40 years, he put up with their ways in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land to them by allotment. After that, he gave them judges for about 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, he asked for a king. They asked for a king. So God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. 
And when he was removed, he raised him up, David, as king to them, whom he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. From this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a savior, Yeshua. After John had first preached before his coming, the baptismal of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing this course, he said, who do you think I am? I am not he, but behold, there comes one after me, the ones whose sandal I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to you the word of his salvation has been sent. For those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they have found no cause for his death in him, they asked Pilate, and they should be put to death. Now, when he had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. He was seen for many days by, who, by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to his people. And we declare to you glad tidings. The promise which was made to the fathers, God hath fulfilled for us, their children, in that he raised up Yeshua. It was also written in the second Psalm. You are my son, today I have begotten you. And about that, and that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He spoke thus. I will give you the sure mercies of David. There he also says in another psalm, you will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. For David, after had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up saw no corruption, Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that though through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins, and by him everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the land of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken to the prophets come upon you. Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which will by no means believe through, though one were to declare it to you. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that the words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews devout Prolistus followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Paul turns to the Gentile. You'll find this in Acts 13, verses 44 through 52. On the next day, on the next Sabbath, excuse me, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we will turn to the Gentiles. For as the Lord has commanded us, I have set 
you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should for be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Now, when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as been appointed to eternal life believed, and the word of the Lord was being spread through all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women, and the chief men of the city raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and expelled them from their region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them, and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Paul and Barnabas in Iconium, Acts 14, verses 1 through 7. Now it had happened in Iconium that they were together to the synagogue of the Jews and spoke so that a great multitude, both Jew and of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was hearing, bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part sided with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and the Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lasteria and Derby, cities of Lacedaemonia, and to the surrounding region and they were preaching the gospel there. Now guys, this is the last part for today's reading. Paul and Barnabas Listeria, in Listeria in Derby. This is in Acts 14 verses eight through 20. And in Listeria, came a man without strength in his feet, sitting a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intimately, and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped up and walked. Now, when the people saw when Paul had done, they raised up their voices saying to the Lysonian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men and Barnabas and call, they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in the front of the city, bought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul had heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We are men with the same nature as you and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all things that are in them, who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness. In that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these things, and with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, having persuaded the multitudes, 
they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and he went into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Wow. All right. They were doing some stuff. They were still pretty idolatrous. And remind you, this literally, where we're at right now in our daily reading, this is after our Savior has risen. And to this day, it's only gotten worse. But you know what? The word of Yah will still be preached. It will still be preached. And those who have ears will hear. So I pray that you are finding something that you can learn from as you read throughout the Bible daily, I pray that the Most High does speak to you in your situation, wherever you are in your life, in this world that he's created. If there is anyone who has not chosen Christ, today is your day of salvation. Because tomorrow is not promised for any of us. And if you do not have him as your savior, you will likewise perish. You'll have an eternity without him. But if you have chosen him now, or if you choose him now, Allow his Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you in everything that you say, everything that you do, the company that you keep, the food that you eat, the place where you work, where you live. Allow him to lead you in every aspect of your life. Until next time, shalom.